What is happening everyone? Welcome to my How After Effects tutorial. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to recreate the imitation game trailer text effect inside of After Effects without using any third party plugins. So what you see right now on the screen is what I'm going to show you today. And keep in mind awesome people that this is not the only way to use this text effect. You can combine this whole thing with a camera and end up with something that looks like this. Now you can create some different styles of motion graphics by changing your camera setup and end up with something that looks completely different than what I have right now. So let me show you how to do all of this in two parts. Now awesome people, the part one, I'm going to show you how to do the core uh, animation, the principle, the main animation part. And in the part two, I'm going to show you how to add more depth and how to add some camera angles to the whole thing. So make sure you watch both of these parts and uh, let's get started. So awesome people, I've created my new main composition. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start by creating a new text layer. Now awesome people, when you're typing out, remember to type everything in caps lock. So we want upper case letters. So based on a, that's right. Let go of the caps lock now. Now keep in again, you know, don't confuse this with the character panels, all caps option over here. We want everything to be typed out in caps lock, right? So once this is done, you can bring the anchor point right in the center so we don't have any problems with the scaling part. We can adjust the scale anyhow we want. And what I would do awesome people is I would duplicate this and type in my next thing. So true story, right? Again, awesome people, this cannot be in lowercase. Everything has to be uppercase, a true story like this. And you can scale it up. Basically, awesome people, this is what I'm doing. Uh, this is like basic graphic design. I'm just aligning how my text is supposed to be. Something a little bit like this. And awesome people, the true story part, this part right here is gonna get deleted in the end because it would be a lot better to add all the effects on this layer right here, the based on layer, the first text layer, and then just duplicate it and then, um, you know, replace a true story like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my true story layer and I'm going to make this dark green. So I know that in the end I have to delete this layer. So with that being said, let's get started. Now go on your first text layer. It can be anything for me. It's based on a uh, to all this down, go to animate and then take this option right here, character offset. And what you see awesome people is we have this option character offset. If I was to scrub this, you can see that I'm getting this animation. So what will you do? Will you use wiggle? Well, awesome people, if you were to use wiggle, you're going to end up with a very serious problem, which is this. If I type in wiggle one comma 10, and if I play it, you can see that there comes a time awesome people when it actually reveals the original text layer. So this is not going to cut it. So what we'll do is we'll use a different expression called random, right? And it works a lot like wiggle, but it's a little bit different. Now I don't have the time to explain you how is it different. So just trust me on this. It's a bit different and this is going to get our work done. So random zero comma zero and just let this go. I'm going to create a new adjustment layer. I'm going to call this controller, right? Effect expression controls slider control and I'm gonna rename the slider control to random one right duplicate this so we have two randoms now and I'm gonna lock this uh, panel so you don't lose it again and again now awesome people we basically are gonna replace the first property of random the random one and we're gonna replace the second property of random with random two Right, so this is a big line of code. Now this looks difficult and you know, kind of scary, but don't worry, this is not that difficult. And uh, you know. so again, it's very simple. Now what we'll do awesome people is we start to animate. Now how will we animate? What we'll do is we will go to somewhere around 115. So about 39 frames. I'm gonna start the animation for both these sliders. So both of them are supposed to be at zero. Move back in time. And I'll change this to somewhere around 10, 10, right? Now, if I was to play this, you can see that we get the randomization. But the problem is that awesome people, the randomization keeps happening. And then at a certain time, like at 114, it just pops to, you know, our original text layer, like based on a, and that's not what we want. We want it to eventually like start to reveal every alphabet and then form the original text layer. Right? So what we'll do is we will go to animator one. Now, awesome people. The animator one has come from this animate option that we just took. So 
if we open this we're gonna get to our character offset we'll go to another option over here which says range selector now I don't again I don't have the time to explain you what range selector is but believe me I'm gonna be making some tutorials on this topic soon so no worries okay open this go to advance and switch on this option right here randomize order it's off by default switch it on this is gonna help us get that random pop-up effect like for example you can see awesome people over here how the B force comes in then A and then S then you know we have a D over here and then everything just kind of randomly pops on that's gonna help us with this so randomize order on and then awesome people I'm gonna animate this property right here end so go back to 114 115 start the animation move this keyframe right here and bring it down to zero right now if we were to play this you can see that yeah we are getting that effect it, it doesn't it just doesn't pop up you know out of frame it slowly forms our text layer so that is good that is good now what I'll do awesome people is that if you're like awesome people I'm sorry I forgot to tell you guys about this if you guys are having problems with kerning if you feel that the alphabets are a little too much when they are like this like if you're, ha if you're having this problem select your text layer go to character panel and increase the tracking right here right and increase it just a bit you don't want it to be super long like you don't want just too much gaps you know in the, in the middle of every alphabet but a little bit is fine so we have this now this is good awesome people what we'll do is we will select this okay um, right click keyframe assistant and easy ease same with the controller with the U key select both of them right click easy ease right and next awesome people what I would like to do is I would like to go again in the advanced category and add the easy high from 0 all the way up to 100 so now if you were to play this we get a nice ease on effect so this looks good next awesome people is I would like to add some color to this so I'm gonna go to FX and presets type in tint take it and drop it onto my layer oh sorry wrong layer all right and you can see nothing really happens so what we'll do is we will change the color from white to a nice tintish effect like that right now if you think this is too much you can always bring down the uh, opacity of this effect from amount of tint to say 50 right and this looks good all right this I'm gonna take it to 75 yeah this looks good to me now awesome people I would like to add a bit of detail um, to the text effect and that is by adding this glow effect see this um, come on you can see how the over here it's a little bit of that blow that glow effect so how to do that well very simple open your main text layer animate and then go to blow right and change this amount to somewhere around 10 10 or say 5 5 should be good right so we have this nice blurred out text now and what we'll do is we'll open range selector and we will animate offset so start the keyframe add a keyframe and you basically want to scratch this animation to be somewhere about double of what your randomization was so if, if my randomization ends at 115 my offset animation is supposed to be three seconds make sense I'm gonna take this all the way up to a hundred now if I was to play this you can see that the blur sort of goes away in um, like in, in an order it goes from left to right that's not what we want so what I'll do is I'll increase the end value or actually I'll decrease the end value to somewhere about you can say 30 20, 20 30 should be good and now if I was to play this you can see how the blur sort of jumps and again yeah um, one more option I forgot go to the advanced tab and switch on randomize order so make it to on and then you can see that the blur sort of jumps alphabets right check that out that is good I'm gonna decrease the end value to somewhere about 15 15 should be good all right we're getting somewhere now awesome people what can we do more yeah what we can do is we can go to FX and presets type in glow take that drop it onto the layer and as soon as you do you're gonna see that the color just went away no worries just bring the stint effect below the glow effect right you can see if I was to play this now we are getting that effect 
and this is good this is good stuff uh, next we need to apply the same thing on this text effect true story right now instead of copy pasting this whole thing we can duplicate this based on a bring this down change the text so again switch the caps lock key if you want to not use the caps lock key you can still type out something that looks like this true story but now when you go back in time you can see that the randomization happens in lowercase letters so that's not what we want so again capital true s-t-o-r-y story and check everything all right this looks good and what I can do awesome people is you can bring the anchor point up here so now when I was so now if I scale it it's gonna scale from that point make sense I'm just gonna adjust it a bit using my arrow keys delete this layer the dark green one this is just for our reference and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, change the hue of the tint that I applied from yellow to say a greenish color right there right if you play it you're gonna end up with this right makes sense now awesome people you can add a bit more effect by adding a nice BG color so you can you can go type in tint apply the background bring the background below your text layer and add like a nice green dark green sort of an effect right not the best color but right there I think that should look good go to your ellipse tool double click on that so you get this effect if you make a perfect ellipse um, open this take the feather up to 350 right and bring the mask expansion down right there there you go about I think 4410 should be good uh, bring down the opacity of this layer from 125 and okay, 25 I think it just disappeared <laughs> I'm gonna take this up to say 40 right and we have this nice middle light effect right and this is how you create a very nice puzzling jumbling sort of a text effect inside of Adobe After Effects now awesome people the camera angle um, all of these other effects that I have created here are gonna be covered in the part 2 so I'm gonna bring us I bring an end to part one and I would say thank you so much for watching my video tutorial on how to create some puzzle sort of effects inside of Adobe After Effects and this is what we have made today so thank you so much for joining me on this tutorial awesome people you guys are awesome thank you so much for watching my video please like this video on YouTube like my Facebook page please subscribe to Zen Gen Learning part two coming up and I will see you all next time take care everyone